Hey everyone, my name is Brian and I'm the 3D Print Creator and in this video I'm going to guide you step by step in the Simplify 3D Profile for the Artillery or FNOVO Sidewinder X1 printer. So the first thing you will do when you go to uh, Simplify 3D is open your fabrication settings and then you will come in this menu. And in this menu, which you see here, uh, there are several tabs. And if you don't see them, uh, then you are in the simple profile setting. Uh, so, well, you have to make sure you're in the large setting. So here you have hide advance and show advance. And you have to make sure that you have show advance turned on. The first step is the extruder tab and uh, in this tab there are some things which are really important because you are working with the Sidewinder printer and this is a direct driven printer which means there is no Bowden tube and uh, the material is fed into the extruder directly and the extruder is directly on top of the hot end. Therefore, the retraction distance has to be very, very low. And uh, here you can see that I have the uh, retraction set to only two millimeters. Normally, on a, a lot of other printers, I will have a setting here about six millimeters or maybe even larger, six or seven or eight millimeters, um, because that's needed for Bowden tube printers. But on a direct driven printer, you don't need such a high retraction, uh, and therefore you can go with two millimeters, which makes your print extremely fast. Now, on this printer I found out that you don't need an extra restart distance. Uh, it's really not needed and uh, therefore, well, I've turned it off. I've set it to zero. Now, when I was watching the print that came with the printer, the sample print, I saw that while printing this sample print, every time that there was some retraction uh, going on there, uh, they also used the retraction vertical lift, which you can find here. This setting in particular makes your print very, very clean. And therefore I have this retraction vertical lift set to 0.4 millimeters. Uh, and this means that every time when the printer is going to retract, it's also going to lift the nozzle from the print. Then it's going to do its retraction. Uh, it's going to bring the nozzle to the next point where it has to print and then it's going to lower the nozzle on the print again. This is something you wouldn't do normally with any other printer because uh, normally the z-axis movement is very slow. Uh, but on this printer the z-axis movement is extremely fast and therefore uh, this will yeah, it, it will slow down the print a little bit, but it's not that much. And uh, therefore, you can have extremely high quality prints with this printer, with this turned on. Now, the retraction speed is only set to 30 millimeters a second, and you really don't need to have it faster than this. Now we go to the layers tab. And here we will have uh, something, well, in this uh, layer settings, you just change it uh, for every print uh, every time again. So this is not something we're going to cover in this video, but the first layer settings are special. <coughs> and uh, you need to set these settings for your very first layer. Now, the first layer height, it has to be 120%, which means that it will be just a friction uh, above the point where you leveled your bed. And uh, this is something uh, we do because of some other things we will see later on in this, uh, in this profile. Uh, but you have to go a little bit higher than normal and therefore it has to be at 120% instead of 100%, which you will normally do. Now, the first layer width is going to be set to 150%, which means that there is more filament oozing out of the nozzle uh, on the first layer as on any other layers. And uh, also, this is done because we want to have a good uh, adhesion to the print bed. And we will see later on what's happening uh, with some other settings. 
Now, of course, uh, this is a very fast printer, but you don't want to print that very first layer also that fast. So I've set the first layer speed to 50% and you can even lower this if you like to. Uh, I leave it at 50% because I see that, uh, well, it's just good enough. 50% uh, uh, of the normal speed is something which is okay for this printer. Now, again, the start point where you set it, it's uh, determined per print and I'm not going to spend time on it for this video uh, because this is something you will set per print. Now, on the additions, um, normally this is also something you are going to set per print, but I do want to say that for the skirt, if you use a skirt, then give it two outlines and this is because this is a very large printer uh, it's a printer which has a bed which is 30 by 30 centimeters and if you give it two outlines then it gives you just enough chance to re-level your printer if needed if you see that the printer is, is uh, just a bit too high or too low on the bed so if the nozzle is, is not really perfect leveled uh, on the bed, then uh, these two outlines gives you a chance to, to just do that quick adjustment just because you have those large knobs on the, underneath the bed. And uh, therefore, well, I think it's more than enough. You don't have to re-level this printer that, that often, but uh, it, it just gives you that possibility if needed. Um, then the infill tab, well, something you're going to set every time and again for every print. So not going to do that in this video. The same goes for the support. Uh, but then we go to the temperature settings. Um, I found out something funny when I was watching uh, the sample print that came with the printer. And there were a few things which were pretty funny. And then when I was thinking of it, it was extremely clever what they did. Uh, the first thing they do is that when the printer starts, the very first layer, the bed is heated up up to 80 degrees Celsius. So uh, they bring the bed up to 80 degrees Celsius and they do this because then uh, the very first layer will stick extremely well to that diamond glass plate uh, which the print bed is. Then at the third layer, they bring it to 55 degrees, so then uh, it will be a lower temperature, but it's still enough to have the print adhere to the bed very, very good. And this is something they do very clever, uh, because then uh, still the print adheres to the bed, but you don't have to heat it that much anymore. Now, the same thing they do with the extruder. Also, in the start, they bring it to a 230 degrees Celsius for a PLA print, and they lower it while printing on the third layer to 210 degrees. Um, again, this is something they do just for that very first uh, two layers. Uh, there they bring the temperature a little bit higher, and therefore they will stick to the bed extremely well. Now, you have to know that because this is a diamond plate glass bed, um, you, uh, when, when the print uh, bed lowers in temperature, the print will just fall off. Uh, so you don't have to, to fight uh, to, to get your print off the bed. It's, it's just when, when the temperature lowers, it will just fall off. And uh, therefore, this is a great setting and I love it. Now, for the cooling, again, they do something really, really nice. Uh, the first layer, they, are just no, they, they don't turn the cooling on. So if you watch the, the sample print, uh, it's not being cooled in the first layer. They do it at the second layer, and uh, then the cooling turns on at full thrust, and therefore, well, it's a great, uh, great cooling fan. Then... Again, G-code, not something you are going to change for this printer. Uh, here I show it so just so you can see it, but uh, you're not going to change anything here. Scripts, the same thing. Uh, this is just the standard script. You can change things here if you like, but well, I don't need to change anything here. Now for the speed, this is something uh, which you have to know. 
this printer is extremely fast. Uh, you can print up to 100 millimeters a second very easily. And uh, well, th there is no problem with, with printing that speed. Um, just because uh, this printer is built like a tank. It's very, very sturdy. But you will have some rippling and uh, you will see that in prints that have uh, yeah, strange shapes like letters in a, a uh, x or y direction for example and then you will see some rippling and uh, you can you can prevent that from happening uh, by lowering the print speed to about 75 or 70 millimeters a second now, again, if you don't have uh, that high detail in your print, and if you want to print uh, things like, for example, a box or uh, an inlay for uh, a drawer or that kind of things, you can easily, but I say really easily, go to 140 millimeters a second with this printer without any problem. This printer can handle that speed. Uh, your nozzle, which is a volcano type nozzle, can uh, melt plastic that fast that you can reach these types of, of speeds. And uh, I've used it very, very often. Uh, and well, it, it, it just works. And this is amazing about this printer. You can uh, have prototypes for, for a print in, in just minutes and it just works flawlessly. Now, some other settings here. Uh, you don't have to mess with this uh, for this video. Uh, you, the, these are just settings which are fine for you to know. Uh, but the standard settings which came uh, when you uh, uh, make this profile are just okay. And then in the advanced tab, well, this is always a very, very important setting. Uh, that's your movement behavior. And make sure you have this uh, turned on, avoid crossing outlines for travel movements. If you turn this on, then uh, your nozzle won't, uh, yeah, won't hit other places on the print while moving from one point to another point. And well, this is something I, I always turn it on. You don't have to worry that much about it because here we have said that there is also a ret retraction, vertical lift. But it's something which always helps to, to make sure that your print won't be knocked over by the nozzle. Now, another thing uh, to, to know is that the thin wall behavior uh, can be set to perimeters only or to allow single extrusion walls. This is a matter of how detailed your print will be. Uh, normally I leave it at perimeters only and then I set it to allow gap fill. And uh, well, this works very nice for me. So uh, I'm not going to change this. Now, note that in my profile, which is on my website, I've uh, just the normal settings for PLA, ABS, PTG, PVA and nylon, but I also included the engine settings. Um, these are the settings for ColorFab engine material. So if you click here, then uh, you will be brought to the temperature settings for ColorFab engine. And these are uh, things, yeah, I really love this filament. Uh, it's my go-to filament for almost all my prints nowadays. Uh, it's a f very nice filament. I, I love the colors. I love uh, how it prints and how detailed it is. And, uh, well, it's just a perfect filament. And the thing you have to know if you're printing with engine, very, very important, leave your cooling off. So... Add, uh, remove this set point for uh, your engine filament. Not for any other thing, but for engine, make sure you don't have any cooling. So if you go to PLA, then you will see that there is cooling again. But if you go to engine, no cooling at all. Uh, you don't need to cool this filament and you will get a great, great result. This is it. Uh, I hope you liked this profile uh, video. I also hope you liked this profile and uh, I wish you a lot of nice prints with your Artillery Sidewinder X1 printer. And make sure to follow my channel for updates, uh, well, 
I will be doing a lot with this printer on this channel. So make sure to follow and subscribe and that kind of things. And if you like this video, please also give it a like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye bye.